Hi, I'm Hallie Castleberry. On this edition of Soaring with the Pelicans, we'll talk about our complete transition to the Cubs family. Our clubhouse makeover, Warren and Harmon, came in during the offseason for the renovation, and we'll show you the new and improved digs. April 10th was robotics night, and Nathan was able to catch up with Cubs pitcher Kyle Hendricks, who pitched for the Pelicans back in 2012. Soaring with the Pelicans starts now. This year, the Pelicans switched from being affiliated with the Texas Rangers to being affiliated with the Chicago Cubs. Let's go to General Manager and Vice President Andy Milovich for more on the transition. The opportunity to partner with the Cubs was a great opportunity for the Pelicans and, and really for the Grand Strand as a whole. Um, after four successful years with the Rangers, we were incredibly excited about the number of teams that showed an interest in coming to Myrtle Beach and affiliated with the Pelicans. And, had our pick of the litter really. Ultimately the Cubs represented a national brand with a major fan base that's passionate and follows and travels well. Uh, the best farm system in baseball, an organization on the cusp of becoming one of the leading franchises in Major League Baseball and uh, the timing just aligned itself perfectly. It's a uh, you know it's a tribute to, to Theo Epstein, Jed Hoyer, um, everybody affiliated with the Cubs organization that they built this farm system this quickly and this significantly to become the top organization in baseball and um, you know to to not only have the upper level prospects that are making their way to Wrigley Field right now but to have the the Kane County franchise from last year feeding us that had the best record in all of baseball it just speaks to the uh, the quality of people that they have throughout their system and the quality of people that they're drafting and um, you know I think the uh, the Cubs have an incredible farm system, an incredible collection of talent, but they also have great people. And I think when you look at what we try to do in terms of um, creating that incredible fan experience, um, bringing fans close to the team and getting them engaged with what's going on, it's a, it's a really, really good fit. Uh, the way the Cubs have built this farm system, the type of people they've built it with, and the type of organization that we try to be. The Cubs have a long storied history and they've had some incredible players that have come through it. They've had uh, an incredibly um, engaged fan base over the course of time, but um, the baseball side has really reinvented itself since Theo Epstein and Jed Hoyer took over the leadership in that department. Uh, and part of that was really changing the culture from the day that people sign to their experience throughout the minor leagues with regard to both player uh, and their personal and professional development and then uh, how they go about their business at the big league level as well. So the Cubs way is um, the phrase coined by, uh, by Theo and Jed to, uh, to kind of change the culture and the mindset and kind of develop a, a, uh, an approach to how you go about your business that's consistent with the way you develop and build championships. And um, you know, we think we do things on a great, uh, in, a, in a great fashion here in Myrtle Beach and have one of the best operations in baseball. And, when you look at the way the Cubs approach their player development system and their baseball operations now, it's a, it's a perfect fit. It's been pretty seamless, you know. It's, uh, it's been kind of easy going uh, staff to work with and, uh, you know, it's been, it's been an absolute pleasure working with the front office here. They've, they've been, they've done, went out of their way to help us out, you know, get settled in and uh, obviously it's a pretty uh, lively community and it seems like the, the crowd is really intelligent. As far as baseball-wise, uh, you know, they, they know what's going on and they, they keep up with the game and they understand how the game is supposed to be played. So that's, and it's on, and, and the crowd is really on top of you here. So you can really hear what everybody's saying and uh, it's pretty cool. Well, I think the Cubs are, are one of the three or four teams in Major League Baseball that are truly national brands and national teams. And uh, part of that's being, uh, you know, the north side of Chicago, Second City. Uh, having the great players that have come through there from Banks to Jenkins to Sandberg and you name it uh, up and down the, the history of the Cubs. There's, uh, there are Cubs fans throughout the Midwest and now Cubs fans throughout the country and um, certainly we've seen a, a plethora of Cubs fans in the ballpark already in the couple of weeks that we've been playing and uh, I think it's one of those things that's going to continue to grow as more and more Cubs fans learn about us and more and more people throughout the Midwest plan their summer vacations and come to Myrtle Beach and uh, I think from our perspective, it's a marriage made in heaven. <laughs> 
Pretty much everywhere you go, when you when you have, when you wear the, the Cubs emblem on your shirt, you know it's a, it's a special thing, and, and you feel a sense of pride because there is such a, a vast uh, fan base and, and support from you know people across the, the country and the world. Well, I think the Cubs have a long story tradition, and Wrigley Field's on the bucket list of any uh, you know big sports fan. So, uh, recognizing some of the things that have made that tradition and that mystique. Uh, come to life in Wrigley Field on the north side. Uh, we wanted to do some things to really put a Cubs spin on what we're doing here at the ballpark. So, uh, you know, rebranding the Ring of Fire Grill as the Clark and Addison Grill, and not only cleaning up the outside of it and making it uh, really take on a, the feel of the Chicago Cubs. We've, we've introduced some new food items. Uh, we've themed some of those food items in the names of Cubs greats. We've introduced uh, the Italian, an official Italian beef sandwich. Uh, we've introduced the Chicago style hot dog. Uh, and then we've added things like the um, uh, flagpole where we raise the W flag after every game. The Grissom Plaza has be, been rebranded. Uh, we now have the Ivy with the Cubs dimensions and uh, the marquee there. And uh, we've got some great promotions and things in the works that tie into the Cubs. Everything from uh, the taking out, take me out to the ball game during the seventh inning stretch to uh, Christmas vacation in July and, and some Ernie Banks tribute. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. The Cubs present an enormous opportunity to do some things promotionally that tie back in and really help deliver a full experience for Cubs fans that are visiting the ballpark. As new members of the Cubs family, our clubhouse needed a major facelift. Let's learn how the new look came about. The clubhouse renovation basically came about because we were transitioning from the Texas Rangers to the Chicago Cubs. We were going to have to make changes due to the transition to our new affiliate anyway, so Chuck Greenberg, the Pelicans owner, decided to do a complete clubhouse renovation. Now I've never been involved with a clubhouse renovation before, so I was not sure what to expect. I went online and I searched uh, commercial interiors of Myrtle Beach, and I decided to call the first couple that came up. We were so excited when we got the phone call about the uh, renovation that was needed here at the, at the stadium. Uh, we've always loved the Pelicans. Uh, they are a part of the community and it's just great to have a place where people can come and they can uh, spend time as a family. The first company I called came out and looked at the clubhouse that day. The next day they had a complete proposal and renderings of what the clubhouse could look like. We were blown away. A lot of the design I will tell you was done by uh, uh, Whitney Nelson that works with us. She is the, she's the uh, lead designer. I'm kind of the, the I, I own the company and, and, and I'm kind of more of an upfront person, but, but she, her design had to do with with baseball itself, and uh, a lot of what that we did was was in 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 coming up with the design. We had a thought. Then when we came in and saw actually and found out what all it took, we did that the design change a little bit because that it was it was different. For me personally, um, designing commercial spaces, the more creative a project is, the more passionate I am about it. And for this type of project. It was really just out of the box. And so thinking about baseball and creating the feeling for the players that inspires them um, with the space, I initially went to the locker room. The clubhouse had not seen a renovation since it was built in 1999. When you walked in, the, the walls were bare. The carpet had seen its better days. Our entire staff pulled together to help with this process. The clubhouse was completely empty. We took it to no carpet, no paint, no ceiling tiles. It was completely bare. The design came to me pretty smoothly. I immediately thought of creating the baseball field on the floor and that kind of led to the soffit above, which is kind of the central part of, of the whole locker room. The design was inspired through creating or through trying to create a space that is um, functional for the players, comfortable, and represents the colors and images of both the Pelicans and the Cubs. As the players exit the clubhouse and they go onto the field, the last thing they see is a graphic of a W flag that says when it happens. It's a Cubs tradition, they raise the flag when they win, and now it's a Pelicans tradition. When we win, we raise the W flag. It's a tradition passed on to us that puts a Cubs stamp on Myrtle Beach. When hearing about the design and what was needed, 
I was immediately thinking about um, that the Pelicans just became affiliated with the Cubs and so it was obviously important to have the Cubs a part of the design so initially I designed um, the entire space kind of focused around the Cubs being that we wanted to show the excitement of being a part of a part of that team and I think that, that what we did was uh, we concentrated a little bit more, more on one or the other and we've kind of changed some of the, the concept as some of the direction but at the end of the day it was really the same design Something that's very special to the Pelicans is the quote that was above the exit door in the clubhouse. It said, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift. And that quote's from Bruce Dow Canton. Uh, he was our pitching coach who passed away in 2008 from esophageal cancer. Uh, that was the first thing that we actually put back up in the clubhouse um, when it was complete. The whole idea for the clubhouse was to make it comfortable and welcoming. The guys spend a lot of time here. It's their home away from home. And to be able to walk into a new clubhouse is something that they're still talking about. Everyone who walks into the clubhouse comes out saying the clubhouse is amazing. When you enter, there are black and white historical images of the, of the historical players. So even before they get into the clubhouse, they have the feeling of, of being at the baseball stadium, the, the feeling of being inspired, and, and that's really what we're trying to do here. It's just so exciting that, that, the, that the Chicago Cubs are involved. And we, I mean, we've all loved the Cubs all these years. We love the Pelicans, and the combination of the two is great. We're excited about it. The community's excited about it. The Cubs are excited about it. We wanted the clubhouse to say the Pelicans, but we added the Wrigley Field touch and Cubs flair. Robo Splash throwing a first pitch was an impressive part of Robotics Night on April 10th here at the ballpark. Let's learn more about what Robotics Night means for local schools. Well, this is our sixth annual Grand Strand Technology Expo, Tech Expo for the Grand Strand Technology Council. And this is the largest one by far. The Tech Expo has 77 exhibit spaces with all kinds of technologies and companies and organizations that are prevalent in the Grand Strand, and that is growing substantially. The companion uh, event is the Horry County Schools Technology Fair that we started with them also six years ago. And that's grown the first year about 250 students from third grade through high school with their projects and demonstrations. This year, over 1,400 students packing this convention center with their projects, with robotics, with middle, with Lego robotics, the first robotics, Rubik's cubes, all kinds of demonstrations. And as you can tell in my background, how many kids there are walking around, all with an interest in what's going on. Grand Strand Tech Council, they've been loyal um, partners of ours for the last three or four years. Um, what they're doing at the Academy of Arts, Science and Technology is really um, incredible stuff with the kids. Um, the fact that they can build robots is amazing. They're going to be the future leaders um, in this country with the advancements they're making in technology and the things that they're doing. Um, we're using that, um, the Pelicans to raise funds for them, um, show off their robots in competitions and different awards. They're, um, they've won numerous state titles in different robotics competitions. Um, the Grand Strand Tech Expo run by John Sanders has really grown over the last couple years and it's uh, turning into quite an event at the uh, convention center. So we're looking forward to Robotics Night, third annual this year. Uh, this year it'll be in the spring and fortunately it's uh, opening weekend so it should be a fun night. It's also better for the schools because they will have been in session and all the robotics contests and so forth are over with. But everything went well. The kids got to show off what they do. Not a lot of people are familiar with what they do because their schools, if they travel from out of town, don't have um, those kind of departments. Most schools don't have them. Um, Horry County is one of the leaders in that department, which is a good thing for students coming out of those schools. There, first of all, there are all kinds of contests. There's, here behind me is the Rubik's Cube. I probably have 200 kids doing it Rubik's Cube in 30, 45 seconds. I've been trying to work on it for 50 years and I haven't even solved one yet. So these things offer them hands-on doing projects and doing coming up with solutions to problems. So these kids make already very good interns at these companies. Some of these companies have two, three, four high school students as interns. I'm not aware of any of them that have lower grades than that, 
but there are some good coders in middle school that can code for the apps on the smartphones. So this is moving down the food chain in, in age as these kids move up the food chain in technology. So they're already doing in middle school. Well, of course, when I was in school, it didn't even exist, so it doesn't matter. So I think that's a lot of the uh, success of what's happening. This is one of the fine teachers in Lakewood Elementary School that does a lot of technology. And are you going to have students at the Pelicans night? Yes. From our school, we bought 70 tickets. So are we going to do that again this year? Yeah, this always. Year? So what, what result has come from that for, uh, for your students? Uh, everybody in the school wants to be in robotics and there's not enough spaces. And we don't have enough money and enough equipment. Which is why we like to do things like this and, <laughs> and ask for people to donate. <laughs> so anyway, there's tremendous support for robotics and I think this will feed over for the Pelicans and the reverse also happens. So we really appreciate working with the Pelicans. They're advancing their careers, they're taking internships uh, in, the, in the fields that they want to work in in high school, which is a lot sooner than most kids are doing. So they're, they're kind of taking their professional careers to the next level before they get to college. And we appreciate the hospitality from Pelicans too, letting all our kids come. They have such a great time. Yeah, I look forward to it with two things. Number one, it's a lot of work. Number two, it's a lot of satisfaction. So uh, this year, the satisfaction outweighed the work because we're, after six years, with 70 some exhibitors, 50 come back almost automatically. So you really are only selling to a new 15 or 20. And that's just a matter, you know, I grew up being a door-to-door -door salesman selling typewriters and Bibles. It feels great to have a former bird pitching for the Cubs. Let's see what Kyle Hendricks and Nathan had to chat about. Hi, this is Nathan Barnett. We're here in Mesa, Arizona at Sloan Park on the backfields as the Cubs get ready for another day of spring training. We're joined by one of the former Pelicans who's out here in the Cubs complex, a former Rangers farmhand now with the Chicago Cubs coming off of a great first season in Chicago. It's Kyle Hendricks. Kyle, first of all, uh, spring training out here coming off of such a great year you had. What's it like now as opposed to how it's been in the past years uh, for you, just experientially? It's a little different. I think uh, part of it has to do with finally facing big league hitters in real games last year, getting the call up, but also Every off season, every year, you learn more about yourself, more about your body. So uh, there's a lot of excitement buzzing around this camp, obviously, with all the changes that we've made. And uh, I'm lucky; I'm feeling good, and uh, I figured out more about my body, so I'm I'm ready to go for the season. Hey, you meant that you brought up the changes and the excitement that's uh, been around the the team here. Is it something that surprises you the amount of attention that you guys are getting? I mean, it seems like overwhelmingly the Cubs have really been the story of spring training. Yeah, 100%. We, we've noticed all the buzz and excitement for sure, but I think it's all warranted, obviously, with uh, the guys we signed in the offseason, starting with Lester, obviously, and then getting Madden to, to right the ship here. Um, everything's been unbelievable. All the guys are meshing well, so I think the buzz is definitely warranted. A couple of guys I wanted to ask you about you just brought up. Joe Madden, first of all, it, reputation for being a player's manager and seems uh, every bit of the genuine guy that he is on TV that you see in interviews. Well, what's your impression of Joe Madden? That's exactly it right there. He's just a genuine down-to-earth guy, very laid back, uh, and that's how camp has been. He's just had us, he brought us in here, everything's all accountable, so you, you have to do everything on your own pretty much, which I think is how it should be at this level. You know, we all know what we need to do to get ready, and he's kind of letting us figure out our path and uh, gel as a team with kind of without him in the way. Here with Kyle Hendricks. Now, you've been a, a very consistent player over the course of your year, uh, career in the minor leagues and now in the major leagues. What have you learned, though, from John Lester so far here in camp? I've learned a lot, honestly. I haven't had too much time to sit down and talk to him. He, uh, he's a very hard worker. He goes about his business uh, you know, in a very professional manner. And that's all I've done is kind of watched him, see how he goes about that business and what he does on a day-to-day -day basis. Obviously, a guy that's won some World Series. So if you can't learn anything from him, then something's wrong. Is there any single detail that you've picked up that you've tried, uh, part of his routine or anything? Honestly, part of it is uh, the PFP work he does. You know, we, we do do PFPs here, but he takes it to another level. He work, he'll stay after and work on things, and I think it's something you need, just the little details to win at this level, and uh, that's something that really hit home with me. Now let's talk a little bit about you. Uh, since your time in Myrtle Beach, where you pitched very well, led really an incredible rotation that was there that year that uh, you were back in Myrtle. Uh, coming off the year that you had, how do you think you had the success that you had in Chicago last year? I think it started with the coaches in the minor leagues. Part of it when I was with Myrtle Beach, Brad Holman, uh, the pitching coach there, he did an unbelievable job, helped me so much to get to where I am. And obviously we, there are coaches in this organization as well now with the Cubs that, that I've come up with. And 
it's uh, establishing that routine, something that makes you feel comfortable and confident every time out on the mound. I was lucky early to, to kind of have that guidance and find that routine that really helps me, and uh, it's been paying off. Now, there's a lot of people that talk about your educational background, being an Ivy League guy from Dartmouth. Do you think that's a factor for you? Do you feel like you're a cerebral pitcher? I think somewhat, maybe. Um, I don't have the stuff, per se, to dominate hitters, so I think I kind of have to be to survive. Uh, you know, I get in the video room, I got to break down hitters more and find pitch more to their weaknesses, I would say, some than my strengths. So there are different parts of my game that are more cerebral, but overall I'm still just a baseball player, you know, just trying to get guys out. Here with Kyle Hendricks, last thing I want to ask you about is your time in Myrtle Beach specifically. What do you remember about, uh, about your year in Myrtle? Oh, that was one of the most fun years I ever had, honestly. The, the fans that came to those games, we loved it. And the, the team camaraderie, for some reason, that was one of the closest teams I was ever a part of. Still talk to a lot of those guys that I played with. Uh, you know, a bunch of them are with different organizations. A lot of them are still with Texas still. But uh, I just had an unbelievable time the, my, the whole year I was there. Oh, well, thanks a lot, Kyle. Appreciate your time. And uh, good luck here the rest of spring. Keep, keep at it and have a great season. Thank you. That was Kyle Hendricks here in Mesa, Arizona at Sloan Park.